But the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jewish, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. Some are Zimbabweans, some are Botswana, some are Nigerians, some are South Africans. But the fact remains that we are one. We have all been baptized into one body by one spirit. And we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. And if the foot says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. Hallelujah. Amen. When you look at what is happening in Today's times, the sense of humanity, the ability to embrace one another. I mean, the culture of Jesus Christ. That does not distinguish anyone from the other. When you look at how fellow Africans before we go far as Botswana the way we treat our fellow brothers from Zimbabwe. The way we use them. The way we ill treat them. The way we dispossess them of what is rightfully theirs. The way we steal their expertise. This on his own says we do not know who we are. Life is not static. Life is dynamic. Your history is very different from your today. That's on its own says life changes. If now you are going to forget that there is what we call tomorrow, yes, you will do as you want. Yes, you will treat others the way you want. But let me tell you, you are not an everlasting person. No, it's the world that you find yourself in. Listen to me. There is God. And this is a God of the non-believers as well as the believers. There is a spirit behind every man. 
And such a spirit mobilizes the human souls. Without such a spirit, no soul would exist. I wish to paint a different picture into how you have been perceiving life. No man is better than the other. I may be a prophet, but this does not make me special than you. I may be acquainted with the power of the Holy Ghost, but this should not make me feel proud. Then see you as the least one. Yes. I may be heavy on materials. But this should not make me forget that without another man, I would have not have such. My people, as the body is, so are we in Christ. The hand needs the leg to reach. The head needs the eyes to see. The heart needs the lungs. And the lungs needs the heart. None of these parts is better than the other. So are we. Never ever esteem yourself high above others. Without your problems, I wouldn't be a mentor your prophet. The Bible has taught me that the place of God as the heavens are so are they. He will never think the way we think. He will never plan the way we plan. The situations in another man's life should not make you take advantage, but rather should make you manifest the power of God in such people. Where there is need, be a channel of provision. Where there is a skill, use it wisely and not for self benefit alone. I'm not shocked with what South Africans are doing. The same, we are doing it. The Bible says, Menda. Begins in the heart. Before you may execute with your hands, you must have head malice. A man who is killing another man in South Africa is not different from a woman who is using a Zimbabwean man to enrich herself in Botswana. Who is killing another man in South Africa? It's not different from you. Who is using a Zimbabwe thereafter you report them to the police? A man who is looting a foreigner's possessions in South Africa is not different from you. They say you are doing it almost one. Why do we see another man as a stranger? Who knows? God had a plan by collapsing the Zimbabwe economy so that we become one people so that there be intermarriage so that there is that 
strong DNA of Zimbabweans in Botswana. Why then should you see them as strangers? Look. Everyone here was born poor from your mother's home. Making your way. But look at how you are. Not by power. Not by might. The very sense of care that it took you from day one of your conception up to where you are should be an empowerment to you. Ask yourself why is it that your mother was not poisoned while well pregnant of you? Why didn't she fall on her tummy? As you were calling passing by chemicals so dangerous. Why could you do drink of them? Who said this one is not edible? This is danger. That which you cannot do to others today. When you grew up, you fell in wrong hands. There were traps for your death. There were everything set to destroy you. But the Holy Spirit said it all. Why should I? I and mean, then forget of the goodness of God in my life when it comes to other people. We have to rule our hearts. And in the matter of ways, we are wasting our times by calling ourselves born again people. The Bible says, both life and death come in from our tongue. What you say is a seed that you will eat tomorrow. Your words you speak becomes a foundation laid for you tomorrow. What is your confession? Why do you call another man by their country? No one has ever called you Mutsuana. But you call another a Zimbabwe, a Nigeria, a descendant. Where is that pillar of brotherhood? Do not forget that in this world we are all passing. In this world we were just privileged to come and see the works of the fingers of God. That there is a way our homes. <sighs> and why you stood here, forget not that the journey continues. Don't let that shake to confuse your mind. Don't let that car you parked outside to steal your peace. Don't let that house to destroy your final destiny. Which is in salvation. The Bible says, even if I may prophesy to the fullest of it all, even if I can lay hands of healing and deliverance, if I have no love, then I am as good as nothing. Let love. 
who was selling fatty cakes. And every time she goes to the market, there would be this madam man. He will humbly ask for one or two. And after eating, he will insult this woman. He will insult this woman. Day after day, this woman, the fact that she believed in God, so it fit to give this madman faith cake. Day after day. But the time came when she was fed up and she prepared the poison that today gonna show that crazy man but I'm also a human being emotional as he is and when the thought came something said no Satan said do it something said no and in that very fateful day the madman did not eat of the fat cake. He took it, insulted her again, and then went on with his journey. On the way, he saw a girl who seemed to have collapsed due to hunger. And he gave her the fat cake. She regained consciousness. And he asked her, Where do you come from? And she said to him, I'm a daughter of the woman who is selling fat cakes in the marketplace. And he took her by hand to the very woman and he said your fatty cage has saved your daughter what is the essence of the story could she have put poison in that fatty cage it would have killed him very well what does this mean? Whether I'm bad or I'm wrong, you should not hold offense. Don't even think bad against me. Treat me with respect. Have patience that in the time I'll become a useful person. This is what we are failing to understand. The Bible says we were once Gentiles. No one killed us. But someone died for us. Why then should we kill other beggars? No tit for tat. Event not. Yes. The Bible says, when they beat you, give them another sight to beat you up. Hallelujah. 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 I believe this very short message. I have enlightened your heart. Yes. The person you are sitting to. Is your Messiah. We need one another.